Good afternoon, and welcome to the Ask Weldon Show, episode 249, Weekend Warrior Climbs, Ranked Anxiety, and Authoritative Coaching. My name is Weldon, and this is the show where you call in questions and ask me questions, and I answer them. I am a uh, sports psychology trainer, uh, and my degree is a master's degree in sports science and sport and exercise psychology, and I'm currently the head coach of CounterLogic Gaming, I'm mostly focused on the League of Legends team, and uh, that was since basically December, uh, October, October, November, December 2018 when I transitioned here. Previous to that, I was coaching other teams and doing sports psychology training for individual athletes as well as teams. And most of the questions that people call in are related to either sports psychology or esport coaching. Uh, a little bit to League of Legends and League of Legends strategy. And on this channel, you can find VODs related to kind of all of that stuff. So why don't we jump right into the show? Oh, to ask a question, right? To ask a question, please use the Anchor app. Go to anchor.fm slash Weldon Green, and you can call in questions. The reason we do it that way is because I can put them on the show as audio, so you call them in. Also, because you're using this app, it tunes your audio, so you sound really, really good when you call in. It's kind of like it makes your phone into this, you know, radio booth kind of sound and gives you a nice little bass and tunes out all of the the... the typical scratchiness that goes with a phone call and so you can sound a lot nicer on air and uh, and then it's really easy for me to filter through all the questions and and play them on stream and you can catch obviously this show live twitch.tv slash my game is well done or you are probably watching it on youtube uh after the after the fact so let's jump into question number one hi well then i wanted to ask you how to make a player want to do VOD reviews with his coach instead of being the coach kind of demanding him to do the VOD reviews. So instead of being an order, it would be more like a coaching suggestion that gives motivation to the coachee. So he keeps reviewing his own play and he keeps improving and he doesn't hit a plateau. Thanks. All right. So um, essentially... The way that I like to look at player motivation to do task is through a theory of motivation called self-determination theory. So if you go to the Google, if you go to the Google, if you go to Google right now and search self-determination theory, you'll find the researcher's website, Desi and Ryan, uh, with a lot of material in a bunch of different fields. Um, and if you search for like blog articles, self-determination theory, how to motivate athletes, you might get more specific kind of applied stuff. And essentially, it comes down to a really basic principle that when people's n basic psychological needs are fulfilled, then they are internally motivated. And if they're not fulfilled, then they're externally motivated. And it's not that chasing something fulfills the need and therefore it's motivating to chase it. It's rather the person's needs are fulfilled, they're full to the brim, they don't need those psychological things anymore, and they're inner battery is charged up and they can expend it on things that they want to expend it on. That's the way I want you to think about it. It's like a battery charge. So uh, what that means is, well, I'll give you the three basic psychological needs now. They are autonomy, relatedness, and competence. So if they feel competent at watching a VOD, learning from it, taking that learning and applying it to their game and getting better, if they feel like they can do that, then they will be more motivated to do it. If they feel autonomous, like they're choosing their own fate, they're choosing to get better at the game, they're choosing to review a VOD, they're choosing to like control kind of their own destiny, they're gonna they're gonna be more internally motivated by it than if they're told to do it or required to do it or mandated to do something they don't want. A simple example of that is let's say you go down to the kitchen. You're living at home, uh, your or you're home for vacation, and it's the morning. And it's like the second or third day, uh, you know, uh, let's say on summer vacation or back, uh, you know, for fall holiday. And you're like, you know what? My mom's always like bugging me to do the chores around the house and help out when I'm here. And I always just go into like kid mode again and, you know, get all like lazy and just sit on the couch and watch TV all day. I go down to the kitchen. I'm going to, I'm going to help out. I'm going to be that son or that daughter. I'm going to go and I'm going to empty the trash. I'm going to take it out to the street. I know the trash truck comes like to no this morning. I'm going to put it in a new bag. You know, I'm just going to, I'm going to take care of it. And like, as you're walking to the kitchen, your mom shouts in the hallway, take out the trash, you lazy bum, help out around here. And your motivation to do that thing goes from 100% to zero in like five seconds, three seconds, five milliseconds. 
Um, that is nothing changed. Literally nothing about the world changed at all, except your basic psychological need of autonomy, of choice. And therefore your internal motivation is gone. So autonomy is the second of those and relatedness, connectedness to uh, like a community or a group or an effort is the third of those. So like if you want to try to get a player to do VOD reviews based on internal motivation, what you're looking at is trying to improve their psychological need fulfillment for one of those three vectors. So you're trying to help them become more autonomous. Some players, that's not a really great idea. They can't control their own emotional urges yet. So it's better to like keep them in a controlled environment and not let them go full to chaos. Eventually they'll be internally motivated, but only after they make a bunch of their own mistakes of which of making the wrong decision and feel the consequences of it and regret it and go into the future with that knowledge. Uh, or you can do it as a group, you know, increase a lot of this like relatedness um, stuff, or you can hit the competence angle and you can point out how they do it very well. You can teach them how to do it and how to do it better. And they can feel like they're good at it. And like it's affecting and impacting their game in a dynamic way that is relatable on a daily day to day level or a game to game level even. And then they can feel more encouraged by that. So that is my recommendation on how to encourage players to do VOD reviews from the motive internal motivation perspective. And there's always a balance between letting people go full on internal motivation versus realizing that they're not fully emotionally mature and there needs to be some control in the environment to keep it from going to pure chaos that impinges their internal motivation and, and gives them external motivation. So there's always a mix of that. But specific to your question, that's what I recommend. All right. Um, announcements. So it's currently week seven of the LCS and I'm jumping back into doing Ask Well and Shows again. Uh, leading into the off season, leading into possible playoffs, leading into the gap between playoffs and worlds, and leading into worlds. Uh, and I'm also back to being able to figure out how to do VOD reviews on this channel and have free time to do that. Uh, so make sure that you, if you're just seeing this video pop up on your feed for the first time in a long time, uh, make sure to check back to my channel tomorrow or the next day and check in with my Twitch um, because these things are going to be picking back up. Second announcement I have is that the video program that I, the video course uh, that is like a mindfulness training course for athletes that I'm working on to an app, um, I paused development on it when I moved to LA to take this job, which was last uh, October, and we haven't started development again. And so it's still kind of like in its frozen state. But in the meanwhile, I'm continuing to create the content for it, and I'm continuing to uh, try to update it. Meanwhile, I put the website back up as an American company now. So now I'm not, it's not finished located. So I had a bunch of do, do a bunch of legal stuff and it's now back and running. You can check it out again at mindgames.gg slash MAC. And it's still the video course. This is the third version, the one that I launched in 2017, I think. I originally started it in 2015. So this is version number three. There's still a few missing pieces because I had to transition the whole website over. Um, but the, the most important part of the content, the videos is all there. Um, and it's kind of like going to, the app is going to be an adapted version of that. And it's going to come out in the next probably six to eight months. Um, and as usual, uh, everybody who's in the program is going to get the app as well. Like it's a, it's like a lifetime membership kind of deal. So don't worry that if you get it now, you won't be in the app later, um, or you'll have to rebuy something or whatever. That's not the case. All right. So enough of announcements. Let's jump on to question number two from Greg. Hey Weldon, uh, I'm a silver jungler. I'm trying to climb, but I only have time to play on the weekends. Uh, and during the week, I'll like try to catch up on meta and whatever else is going on by like watching YouTube videos, reading patch notes, whatever. Um, but I don't have a lot of time to play, and so climbing is hard to be consistent with. You know, I'll have some weekends where I feel like I don't really make any progress at all or I even go down in net LP. Uh, I was just wondering if you had any tips to help me be a little bit more consistent climbing. All right, Greg, I have some good news and some bad news. Good news is I have some tips. Bad news is my tip is to learn to love not climbing. So, yeah, real talk. Uh, if you're a weekend warrior, as I am, you might have to find some other place to get your mastery sensation from. You might have to find some other place to get your uh, kind of like progressive 
refinement of skill and feeling of mastery and growth that is not League of Legends because as a weekend warrior, it's going to be tough to climb in a world where you are not able to match that climb with people who have the same restrictions as you. If you were in a pod of people who are only playing a certain number of hours per week, then I'd have a lot of advice for you uh, related to like mindset and uh, you know all inning in the time that you have and how to increase mental focus and all that stuff. But to be honest, the global online ladder that are created for these games is not designed to put you with people who share similar traits to you, like age, uh, previous successful level, and amount of time that you're spend, spending playing the game. So what I would recommend instead is uh, try to find local live esport. Try to find something that is uh, local. Try to find something that is live and competitive and that is related to like the fishbowl that you live in. Instead of trying to be a slightly bigger fish every week in an infinite ocean pond, try to be a big fish in a little pond or try to be a fish that is growing inside of a fishbowl with like three other fish and every week you can look at yourself and you can look at your opponents because every single weekend when you go back to the live esport event, the same 10 people are there waiting to be beaten by you and to beat and you can see your progress against them on a, a regular basis. So what you really crave is that is that feeling of mastery and purpose behind your training and, and like this feeling of growth and progress. And you're not going to get that in the online ladder system uh, with like without being able to put in three to two to three to four hours a day. Um, so yeah, that's my advice to you. Either that or learn to ha play for fun like I did. And then you don't have to worry about it. All right, sorry that the answer is what the answer is, but uh, good luck with that. Um, this is usually when I advertise my Mac program, but I already did, so make sure to check it out. Code's right there. You see Ask Weldon to get the $5 discount. On to question number three, also from Greg. Hey, Weldon. Uh, nice I have a friend who music, only buddy. plays ARAMs. How do we get him to play ranked? Uh, I, think he's just a, I think he's just a scared. Okay, thanks. All right, so how to beat ranked anxiety. Um... That's a pretty common one, and the best way that I know to do it is to get used to the stage. Right now, our players have no problem playing ranked, uh, and but they get nervous when they go on stage. Then eventually, they don't even care when they go on stage. They just get a slight bump from it, but they get really nervous when they go on stage and there's 18,000 people there, or it's a big game. And then eventually, they aren't even entranced by finals anymore. It's kind of like old hat, but they're really stressed out when they play against international teams and they go on big international stages. So it's a matter of progressive conditioning and getting used to the thing that used to stress you out and being able to cope with that kind of being on stage in front of in front of people or in front of eyes in this case, uh, which ranked is kind of like a judgment system. It's like being comfortable with that judgment. So the best rule that I've found to get over ranked anxiety is just to never allow yourself to do anything else. Only play ranked and do not care about your ranking and internalize the idea that like your ranking is just a an exact representation of what you're able to do in this video game and nothing more, nothing less. And it's not you and it's not your identity and it's not something that means anything other than like random numbers on a random page. It has no bearing on you. And then you just play and you just play ranked because you happen to play ranked and that's it. And you don't play anything else. Uh, and once you get over that fact and you realize there is no ranked when there's only ranked, then there's just the game. Uh, it's pretty easy just to not care about it anymore. Um, and also you stop doing weird things like being on a lose streak and like playing normals and being on a win streak and wishing you were playing ranked and all this kind of like weird kind of tailoring the moment. Instead, you just play when you play and when you don't play, you don't play and there's nothing but the ranked queue. So that's the way I treated it for years and it worked out very well for me. Even when I was, uh, only playing two games a day. Uh, I would never play a warm-up game either. I would just warm up mentally and just be ready to go. And if I made mistakes, I wouldn't blame it on it being a warm-up game or not being a warm-up game. So, yeah, that's my recommendation to you. And thank you, everybody, for uh, paying attention to the show today and for checking it out. And make sure if you want to check out, uh, if you want to call in a question, go to anchor.fm slash Green. And if you want to 
catch me live, twitch.tv slash mindgamesweldon, and I will be casting the show live at random times right now. I don't have a set time yet, but so you're going to have to turn on channel notifications to catch my stream. Um, but I will see you next time.